Hello everyone, this is the Joy of Reading and welcome to a new video. Today I would like to do the cookie book tag created by Bill Rutenberg. The link is in the description box below. So let's start straight away with the first question. Question 1. Chocolate chip, a great American classic. I choose For Whom the Bell Tolls, written by Ernest Hemingway in 1940. The book is set during the Spanish Civil War in the 1930s. This war was fought by Republicans on one side and Francisco Franco's fascist forces on the other side. The protagonist is an American called Robert Jordan, who fights with the Republicans. He is an expert dynamiter and has to destroy a bridge with the help of a local group of rebels. But then Pablo, the leader of the local rebels, uh, steals the dynamite they are planning to use because he is afraid of reprisals. During this time, Robert Jordan also meets Maria, a young Spanish woman whose life has been devastated by the war. The book is largely inspired by Hemingway's own experience as a journalist during the Spanish Civil War. In my opinion, Hemingway is the greatest American writer of the 20th century, so I just had to choose one of his novels. Second question. Sugar. A work that gives you a warm and fuzzy feeling. Well, the first answer that pops into my mind is the Peanuts comics by Charles Schulz. The Peanuts are by all means my favorite comics. I remember reading them for the first time when I was maybe six or seven or something like that and I still feel warm every time I read them. Third question. Oatmeal. A work that makes you think of home. I had to think for quite a while about this one and I think the answer is La storia d'Italia o fumetti, which can be translated with something like A Comic Italian History by Enzo Biagi, who was an Italian journalist. This is a series of books which tell the Italian history from the fall of the Roman Empire to the 20th century with comics. The author cooperated with uh, some of the most important Italian cartoonists of the time, this happened in the 70s, and the reason why these books make me think of home is because, of course, I had all of them at home. And since I love history, I spent many and many afternoons reading and rereading these books. Question 4. Gingerbread. Your favorite folk tale or fairy tale? Again, this is not easy because I have many favorite folk tales. But one of them is The Town Musicians of Bremen by the Brothers Grimm. This story is about a donkey, a dog, a cat and a rooster that are neglected and mistreated by their owners because they are old and they have become useless. So they decide to run away together and to become musicians in the city of Bremen, which is in Germany. But on their way to Bremen they meet and defeat a group of robbers and they move into the robbers' house and they decide to stay there and age together. I've always liked the way they escape from their owners and then defeat the robbers by standing together. Question 5. Oreo, a supportive character who steals the story. Well, this one is easy for once. Arthur Boo Radley from To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. He is mentioned quite often in the novel, but he appears only in a couple of occasions, and if I remember correctly, he doesn't speak at all. But he steals the novel. And in the movie To Kill a Mockingbird, he is portrayed magnificently by Robert Duvall. He doesn't say a word in the movie as well, and he appears for a total of two or three minutes, but he is unforgettable. Question 6. Biscuit. A great British classic. Well, I have to say David Copperfield. I'm not really a huge fan of Dickens. Of course, he is an extraordinary writer, but I cannot really 
relate with his worldview. Still, I feel a deep affection for David Copperfield and I love the way characters are portrayed and David's aunt is simply adorable. One of my favorite fictional characters ever. Question 7. Thin Mint. A work that you think makes the difference. Well, one could argue that every good book should make the difference. But the one I'm thinking about right now is The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. The book was written in the Soviet Union between the 1930s and the 1940s, but a heavily censored version appeared only in the 60s. The book has two different storylines which at some point become intertwined. The first is a visit by the devil in Moscow, where the devil appears as so-called Professor Voland, a foreign magician, and the devil starts targeting the bureaucrats, the corrupted politicians, the psychophantic artists, and so on. At some point, the devil decides to give a midnight ball, and he needs a lady to welcome his guests, and he chooses Margarita. Margarita is in love with the writer that she calls the master. The master has become insane because his novel about Pontius Pilate has been rejected. And it has been rejected exactly by the same cultural establishment which the devil is now targeting. And then there is the second storyline. That is to say, the master's novel, Pontius Pilate History. It sounds very confused, but there is so much in this novel. There are historical and political criticism, there is black humor, there are mystic and religious themes, and it had an enormous impact on the Russian literature. So, especially if one loves Russian literature, this is definitely a must. Number 8. Shortbread. A writer that is addicting. Well, another difficult question. There is more than one. But the one I think about tonight is Patrick O'Brien, author of the Aubrey and Maturin series. One episode of the series was portrayed in the movie Master and Commander with Russell Crowe and Paul Bettany. The series is set during the Napoleon era, and the protagonists are the Royal Navy Captain Jack Aubrey and his ship's doctor Stephen Maturin. And the books portray the adventures of Aubrey Maturin and their crew, mostly in the British colonies and against the French. I read the first book of the series at the beginning of the summer and I spent the rest of the summer reading the whole series. So there is a strong adventurous component with a very accurate historical setting, but there is also the friendship between the captain and uh, the ship's doctor, who are very well characterized. So especially if you like history, this series is definitely recommended. Question number 9. Black and white. A work you feel you are not sure if you like or dislike. Well, this one is going to be controversial. My answer is War and Peace and Anna Karienina and, in short, any work by Leo Tolstoy. It is absolutely clear that Tolstoy was a literary genius and that both books are masterpieces. There is exceptional writing, there are great characters and deep themes. Yet, I would like to reread any single book written by Dostoevsky, but I wouldn't like to reread War and Peace or Anna Karyanina. There is just too much mysticism for my liking. Question 10. Dog treat, your favorite literary animal. Well, here we go back to question 2, because my favorite literary animal is Snoopy. In the original tag there is a bonus question, which is your favorite cookie is chocolate chip, so there is no bonus question, apparently. This is all for today. I hope you enjoyed my take of this tag, and thank you for listening.